Hi guys, in this video we are going to discuss the problem C that is Dora and search from code forces around 8 for 852 that was rated for div 2. So the problem has a lot of gibberish, I'll not be going through that. So it states that it has uh, there's a girl, a girl named Dora and something of that sorts. But the problem basically is that we are provided with, uh, we are provided with the permutation. Now what a permutation is, that's a basic thing, you can read that yourself. Now the permutation would have a left, leftmost point and a rightmost point, right? And uh, the leftmost point and the rightmost point must not be the minimum or the maximum of the ent entire values that that is present. Now initially it's a permutation. Now when we'll uh, move uh, the left, uh, when we'll move from left to right or we'll move the right pointer to the left a bit, then uh, the values between the permutation would not exactly be called a permutation because let's say this is the permutation, right? this uh, this actually is a valid permutation now if we move a pointer from this location till this location this is the left pointer let's say left pointer goes from 2 to 3 or from index 0 to index 1 and a right pointer is even over here itself then this becomes the array that we currently are having now this array is not a permutation right so whenever we will uh, we'll be moving our pointers so the relevant array or the array under consideration would now not become not be a permutation it can it may or may not become a permutation after the operation we are going to perform or after the traversal we are trying to do cool so with that after every operation there would be some elements that we are going to exclude now let's say uh, initially i had a left pointer over here and right pointer over here so this was the permutation or this was the array under consideration after one operation my uh, left pointer is over here and the right is over here cool so uh, th the element under consideration is this and this uh, element that is 2 is the element that we have now excluded so that's it about the question. So at the end, we have to print the biggest possible segment such that uh, the leftmost uh, leftmost point and the rightmost point are not values which are minimum or maximum of all the values which are present inside the particular array. So for example, over here, the biggest and the uh, biggest value is five and the smallest value is one in this particular array. And we can see that the leftmost point is three the rightmost point is 4 which is neither 1 neither 5 uh le let's uh, move further ha if we had this particular segment the least point over here is 1 in these three values the maximum point is 5 now you can see that 1 is present to the left or the leftmost value is 1 hence it's not a valid answer this however it's a valid answer what about this this also is a valid answer because in this the minimum value is 1 and the maximum value is 5 which are not the uh, leftmost and rightmost point Cool. With that, I'll move further. Uh, also, one more thing is that when you are watching the tutorials, it's always recommended that uh, if you have already gone through the question once, then it's always easier to understand the tutorial. Also, uh, when you are watching the video, make sure that you have actually tried it yourself because if you just watch the video, then it's of no use. If you're doing that, uh, I'll uh, recommend that please uh, close the video right over here. Firstly, try it, uh, try this question yourself and that's the way you'll be able to grow. Cool. With this, let's... Uh, get down to the solution or get down to the intuition so what I'm saying is that since this is the array I'm having so I'll be having two pointers this is my left pointer this is my right pointer and I can check if my left is a valid num so I can have all uh, I can know all the numbers which are inside of this cool and then I'll check that out of all these numbers is my left greatest or smallest if it's the greatest or smallest then left is not valid similarly for right if my right is greatest or smallest then right is also not valid in that case what i'll have to do is if left is not valid then i'll increment my left to the right uh, right uh, place if if my right is not valid i'll move it to the left cool so that's what i'm gonna do so let's say left was not valid my left now would become l is equal to one if my right was not valid my right would become my r is equal to r minus 1 now initially it was n minus 1 let's say so now it will become n minus 2 i hope that that makes sense now the problem is that how do we define what all elements are present inside of the set that we are considering now easier way to do is instead of knowing all the elements that are uh, inside the range that we are considering let's keep a track of all the elements that we have excluded for example in this case that was 5 4 3 1 2 let's say cool in this case my l is over here my r is over here right now i check if my is my left valid 
so it will check what's the maximum value so maximum value is 5 it will say it's not valid because the maximum value is 5 and the leftmost value is also 5 so i'll say like increase my l my l is over here now i'll again do the same check and same check but how do we ch check what the maximum value is so initially i'll maintain two vectors or let's say i'll maintain a set the set would contain all the values uh, which have been excluded so currently initially the values that have been excluded would be zero or it would be a null set wherein no values would have been excluded and initially the smallest value of the entire array under consideration would be one because it's a permutation and permutation starts with one and the largest value would actually be n i hope that's clear so what i can do is when i'll be excluding a value so over here when i'll exclude 5 so i'll say i'm excluding 5 also over here the value of n also would be 5 because it's a vector or it's a permutation of five numbers so n is also equal to 5 now i'll check if my value is equal to the excluded value or the largest value is equal to the excluded value in that case i'll have to decrease my largest value by 1 Cool. So my value would now become four. But it's possible that excluded value. Now let's say there was some other case, and the excluded set already contained something like three and four, right? And now you excluded five as well. So you said uh, like the largest value is equal to uh, four. Now four is also present over here. So you'll say okay, four is also present. Then decrease decrease it by one for the. So now it be, it will become a three. Now we'll say okay, three is also present. Now decrease it by one further. Now it will become two. So yeah, that's it. That's what you need to do. So when we'll be you'll be performing these operations, you'll get to know what all elements are actually under consideration. Cool or are actually inside the segment represented by L comma R. Or when you reach a position wherein both the L and R. So we are checking if L is valid, right? And Uh, then we'll also be checking if R is valid, right? So if it's not valid, then we'll be performing the operation of excluding L. If R is not valid, then we'll be performing the operation of excluding R. If both of these are valid, right? Both are valid. Then we can say that the answer is L L comma R itself. At till the end, if you are not able to find any valid L and R, in that case, we can simply print. Minus one because we can say that no valid index in uh, like is present or is available. Now let's look at the code. The code is also fairly simple. It's a bit messy, I'll say, because uh, this is a code I actually used in the contest, so it's a bit mess messy. If I wanted to give uh like if I wanted to uh you know write the same solution for a uh, uh for any interviews or such or for any placement exam, I would definitely use more uh functions so as to reduce the number of lines of code. but however this is the thing that i wrote so i'll be explaining that only now over here i have taken two sets so one is x and other is rex so the only difference is that uh, x would have elements in the ascending order and rex would have elements in the descending order initially my left would be at 0 and my right would be at n minus 1 also the smallest is 1 and the largest is n as stated and as explained now what i'll be doing is that i'll be traversing uh, i'll be like try to uh, increment my l and try to decrement my r whenever they are not valid so i've written a small function that is called valid now it's just a one liner function so what valid is checking is that the current element that is x should not be the smallest and should not be the largest if these two condition hold then the uh, current element is valid else it's not valid now what i'm doing is if the current element that is v of l so i'm checking for the left index if that is that is not valid then firstly i'll insert the particular value into l and r that's obvious right now i'll check if the current element is the smallest value present in that case i'll have to increment it right so that's what i'm doing so i'm taking my set now my x actually x uh, set actually contains the elements in ascending order so i'll be checking if the current element is equal to smallest plus 1 in that case i'll be uh, set uh, incrementing my smallest or I, uh, i can actually write over, over here like smallest plus plus or i can say that assign smallest as the value of of or whatever is being pointed by the it both of the, them are same if this doesn't hold then in that case i can say i have already uh, i have 
got a value that is better or i've already reached a point where in uh, the uh, current element is uh, is not present inside of the set cool so if that's the case i'll break also over here i'm saying smallest plus plus now why is that the case because what's happening is that this particular set is actually containing all the values that have been excluded but our intention is to keep a track of the values that are present pre, uh, present inside the set cool so if we say that up till this point so let's say up till point x all the values are present in the excluded set so that means the value x plus 1 is not there in the excluded set and that's the reason for in incrementing smallest over here so as to get the correct value cool uh, after that i'll be doing the exact same thing for largest uh, the only difference is that the largest would be decremented in, in, instead of incremented and also the largest would actually be performed on uh, the set rex because it contains the element in descending order after that i just copy pasted this code over here itself because the operations are ex exactly same that's the reason i uh, said that uh, if i was like writing this code for a placement exam or something i would have rather used functions but anyway copy pasting actually makes more sense to me uh, in case of cp so i do, did that so i am exactly doing the same operations over here as well you can see else so uh, what i am saying over here is if my left was uh, left was invalid then do this else if if my right is invalid then do this else now else would trigger when both the left and right are invalid or uh, both the left and uh, left and right are in, uh, are valid in that case i can say that the answer has been observed but we need the answer in one base indexing not in zero base indexing hence i'm just printing l plus 1 and r plus 1 and then i'll return if uh, if the entire loop actually worked and if this worked then that actually means that l is equal to r now if we are getting outside of this loop without triggering this return statement so in that case we can say that we are not able to find any uh, any answer in that case i'll simply print minus 1 and that's the solution i used in the contest if you still have a doubt let me know in the comment section below always more than happy to help you out cool guys thanks a lot for watching this video bye bye